Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ewa Oluwa Witu and Ife Oluwa Oshoke. Wagwan. How are you doing? Bless you. Good. Great. How are you? Not bad, yeah. I'm alive. Yeah, we're all alive. <laughs> I think January um, got a bit slow. It was yeah. moving quite fast, and from the 10th, started moving really slow, like... It's just 15th, right? 16th. Mm. 16th? Is it 16th or 15th? Oh, God. <laughs> okay, know. so... That's how slow it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the first three, which is on Fireboy. I would say congratulations are in order as Fireboy's first album, Laughter, Tears and Goosebumps, hits 100 million streams in 46 days. This level of progress is unprecedented in the history of music business in Nigeria and for a new entrance. What do you guys think? I'm very happy about this because um, this album, I'm not tired of listening to it. Mm -hmm. It's like two months old. Like every time it's like it's the first time. So it's a very good album. A lot of creativity went into that. A lot of work went into creating this album as, as well because you can actually tell it has content. Mm -hmm. It's not just your regular album that you just. I think the only song that even Scatter still has content you mm. get it's not your regular party jam and all of that that doesn't make any and he had sense. like no feature yeah yeah no feature and um i think this guy is a raw talent and then have you seen him do the acoustic version mm. of the songs like you can actually tell that it's not the production that is actually making him sound good he, mm -hmm. he actually sounds good he's a raw talent so big shout out to fireboy and yeah we're still your biggest fans honestly let me say i'm not surprised because <laughs> myself i can't I can't even count how many times I've streamed that album. Like mm -hmm. every single time, there is mm -hmm. no bad song. The last time I had like a very good album like this was when um, Kizania dropped his was it New Era then, and it was like no bad song too, and it was even New Era fun. had some songs you skip, but I don't think there's any okay for you. Yet. But for me, I wouldn't skip right. any song. <laughs> but this album, I mean, I feel like it deserves this, and mm -hmm. if you put out good music, people mm -hmm. will appreciate it. That's it. Right. Joining us to discuss this success and the opportunities available for emerging artists online is a music executive and a digital music director, Mr. Karim Bolaji. Okay, so as a key player in the industry distribution business, what lessons would you expect emerging artists in Nigeria and Africa to pick from Fireboy and YBNL? Well, thank you very much, Elsie. The first thing is success is not given. You have to work for it. And you can't just be working. You have to be very, very calculative. You have to understand what your competition are doing and how you can do yours better and differently. So for me, what I try to do when I tend to work with artists is to actually like sit down to understand their music once I understand your music and the direction where the record label or the artist is moving, it makes things a bit easy for me to work with them. And I'm um, of the opinion that most of the Imagine and Join artists should have an audio map page, an audio map channel. Um, the era of taking your songs to blogs so people can listen to, yes, it's very nice. But the fact is, when all these labels start coming to have interest in you to get signed, you wouldn't be able to collect your data by putting your songs everywhere scattered. But in a case where you have an audio mark, where if I want to sign you, I can say, okay, you are putting out social and social record. After 20 days, the record has done maybe 250,000 streams by a Nigerian artist. You know, I'm going to see you defending that with no help and with um, with resources that are very, very, very low, you could still do it by yourself. So definitely, 250,000 people cannot be stupid. You must, there must be an element in your song that keeps people on their toes to listen to you. So that part of their music is something that I advise everybody, don't joke with your YouTube when you're starting and your audio mark. Even if they are free platforms, yes, they could be free platforms, but that's the easiest way for you to showcase your talent. 
Okay, how large are the opportunities available online for emerging artists and has going digital reduced the amount of finance needed to make a successful artist? Mm, no. Um, okay, let me start from how large the opportunities are available online. Yes, we have a lot of opportunities online. Let me give an example. Um, do you understand that it's easy for an African artist that comes from East Africa to have a million views faster than a Nigerian artist to get 200,000 views. One, internet. While we struggle about, um, with internet in Nigeria, the, how expensive it is, it is very cheap for them at East Africa. That's why it's easy for you to see a diamond drop a song in two days, you see two million and stuff like that. And you see our own artist here in Nigeria still struggling to reach one million. But let me be honest with you. I'd rather have a one million streams reality in Nigeria than have a six million streams of East Africa because we still make more money here when people stream our music from here. So sometimes those numbers, when you equate it to money, it's not the same. So for an emerging artist in a field where you feel that, okay, this thing is where there's a lot of opportunity, the first thing I keep telling them is, please don't run after the money. Build your numbers. When the numbers are built, money will come. There are five major ways to actually make money in the music industry. Performance, endorsements, your um, digital. And the one I actually face and actually understood every day of my life is the digital because that's, that, that's your retirement plan. You are not going to be hot forever. Shout out to certain artists that still get money from the work they've done in the last 10 years. You can't tell me Tosi Martins isn't making money from Olumi. You can't tell me, like a lot of people, um, T.Y. Below, the land is green. So content is very key. You can't tell me Star Plus is not even still relevant. Because most of us have them on our phones, even if they are like, even if they are old things. So the first thing is that your content be right. Make evergreen songs. If your songs are evergreen, digitally you will still be relevant. And your second question: Has the going digital reduced the amount of finance? Yes. No, it hasn't. Because to get money, you actually need to use money to find money. An example is this. I'm a new artist. I want people to know me. I have to put my content out there. I have to shoot a video. If I shoot a video, I have to market the video. I have to go to the radio station. But I think where the mistake is, is not every artist that come into the industry can break out digitally just like that. Mm. It takes two to three years. You are only lucky enough if there's already a structured label for you that understands the game. Mm. You say the team has YBNL did differently with Fireboy, though. Okay. Um, the first thing is this. We thank God for Fireboy's talent. We thank God for his talent because the dude is just a bundle of talent. And for us at YBNL, I'm saying us this time around, it's not about who takes the girl, just want to work. And um, he has a record label of us that actually had albums every year. So by 2019, we just sat down and said, what are we doing differently this year? And he, we, he actually said, I would rather face Fireboy's project to make sure it's well executively produced. And he channeled all his energy. Shout out to everybody. And as well, producers, one thing is this. Nigerian music industry will be way better if we take care of producers the way they help the artists grow. It shouldn't be all about the artists. For us at YBNL, producers that work with YBNL would never want to leave YBNL because there's always a structure that doesn't just protect the artist alone. And you don't need to sign anything with YBNL to say, yeah, YBNL producer or anything. You are taking care of. As far as the artist is growing, you're also growing. So when I know monthly, if it is coming to the artist, it is also coming to me. Am I not going to put my best in? So we are structured to understand that it's not about the artist, it's all about everybody.
including me speaking, as far as everybody has a quota of it, music is a chain. So it's not 90% centered on the artist, 10% centered on no. The record label boss has actually structured it such that everybody's happy. And if everybody on the team is happy, success is very close. Okay, so that was Bola Jikarim, and I like how he talked about the inclusion of producers mm. in the, should I call it, income making now, because mm. we've had this conversation on Tea Time, and we've said that we need um, the industry to start recognizing the efforts of producers, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. because, not even the case of Fireboy, you know, when you know he's even an artist with great content, there are some artists... I'm sorry to say, like, with some questionable content, right? Mm. Um, so I like the angle of the conversation. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with what you said, because it's not even about the income. Even the, um, how do I put it, the recognition that comes with the um, song. You know, when the song is out, it's all about the artist. But if you really notice, when it comes to YBNL, it's like the, the artist and the producer is like trending together with the song. And that mm. makes sense. That's just really fair enough. It, like you rightly said, it would encourage any other person, you know, to put more effort in producing another nice bit because, you know, this is not just about doing it for the artist and getting your money out of it. Mm -hmm. It's also promoting your own work too. I think it also buttressed the point that um, aside from having talent, you also have to work really hard, mm -hmm. you understand? Because, um, yeah, a lot of people have talent, but they don't see the need. They feel like, oh, the talent will eventually speak for itself. But no, it doesn't work like that, especially in this industry, in this um, time and age. You need to put in the work as much as you have the talent. Because if it's just about talent, then you drop one good song and you think, oh, that's, that's good enough. But you can tell that this guy he keeps, yeah, mm. he keeps churning out. And then I like um, the fact that you also touched on um, that um, digital marketing is also a good space for mm. people. You said, um, I think he spoke about digital marketing. Um, um, audio mark. Basically, digitally um, promoting yourself. Yeah, digital um, performance mm -hmm. and um, endorsement. Endorsement, yes. Yeah. So I think like those are the three basic things every artist needs to work towards, especially when you're trying to build your career. And I can't wait for um, Fireboy to. I think he has an endorsement with um, Tommy Hilfiger right now. So, yeah. So, I think that's a good start for him. So let's see how that goes. And big shout out to Fireboy. And um, Bolaji Karim couldn't have said it better. I don't mm. think anyone could have said it better. All right. Um, congratulations to him. And we will definitely keep an eye on the streams and see oh. how far it's going. <laughs> right. Okay, moving on to the next story. Ubi Franklin has been appointed as a special advisor on tourism to the Cross River State Governor, Governor Ben Ayade. The businessman made this known via his Instagram page. According to his post, he said he was not only honored to be appointed, but well deserving of the position as he fits in appropriately, considering his background in the entertainment industry. <laughs> They've been calling yeah. him father of many nations. I think <laughs> right now he's, he's going to be the actual father of I many nations. I like that he's in the news for something good, good. and different, mm, right? Mm. Mm. But, um,. Like he said in the statement, he said, um, considering his um, influence in the entertainment and his um, entertainment background, mm -hmm. he will be able to do the job. The job. So um, let's see if it's, you know, a lot of this um, celebrities or public figures mm -hmm. that get appointed for um, political offices and after are that, just yeah, figureheads. <laughs> yes, I mean, after that, them. We thank don't you see for, them. Um, I feel so happy to be. Yeah, that's we don't it. see them do anything. So we hope um, Ubi Franklin will actually make the difference and actually do something about her because I think that's something we've been clamoring mm. for. On this I feel table. Like, like he will, actually. I don't, I don't know. I just have this feeling that regardless of his um, social media attention craving and things, mm. I feel like he has substance and he knows his onion when it comes to business. So I'm mm. hoping that he will be able to do a very good job um, in I this um, so position. Too. Honestly, when I saw this, I was kind of positive that he's going to do something. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it won't disappoint me because this is like a great opportunity well, for him to, you know, show people that I'm not just that will be that you guys talk about. Not I just the man that I'm pregnant with. <laughs> right. okay. I have more to say. I, I, <laughs> I have more to me. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel it will be celebrated if he can do something different. It's something that everybody really wants to see somebody take this tourism um, thing serious mm -hmm. and then generate money for the state or Nigeria as they owe. So let's say it turns out. And I mean, Cross River is 
a good place to start. Yeah, and I think yeah. um, Cross River um, is a good tourist attraction yeah. already, especially with the um, Calabar Festival mm -hmm. and all of that. So I think a lot of people will trip into the country. Work has been done, actually. Yeah. So there's, it there's be somewhere easy to start from. To, so yeah. if he doesn't do anything, then there's a problem. But I believe Ubi will do a lot. Mm. Okay, we'll go on a quick break shortly. But for those Ankara lovers out there, the Slay Queens and Kings who like to add a touch of Ankara to every style, Afri Classic has got you covered. From bangles to earrings, bags, purses, and so much more, even through pillows and sneakers. Get your Ankara fashion and household accessories and gift items from Afri Classic. That's at A F R I C L A S S I C K. Sorry, I K C on Instagram. Tea time continues right after this break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Alibaba? Alibaba. Right now? Oh, are you? <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi like. Welcome back. This is City Time on Plus TV Africa. Rita Dominic says, "Oh my goodness, Ezu is better than here to be honest." Now, she did not tell us where she's talking about or what she's talking about, but trust bloggers and ah. uh, media people. They say she's talking about Nigeria. I don't know, but I feel like she needs to tell Nigeria us that for me to conclude. Back, um, what the, um, this governor, sorry, what's his name? Iedioma. Mm -hmm. I want to be sure I'm pronouncing okay, it right. Okay, the Imo State Governor. Imo State Governor mm -hmm. is Iedioma, mm -hmm. yeah, that... They are like friends, and then that's why she's reacting that way. But this is well, that's just an assumption. That's just an assumption. Yeah. I mean, it's not confirmed. But you said something on this table one time that when people want to criticize or talk about Nigeria, they should start telling us what exactly it is mm -hmm. that is wrong. Don't just come and say, "Oh, this country is messed up. Oh, this country is this." But oh, this country the interesting is that. thing: like, she did not say country. She did mm. not call Nigeria. <laughs> you can but say what you want to say, but so it could be a house. It could be. Oh, very possible. <laughs> it's it's very really. It could be wherever she was at the point. I yeah. don't know, but because she did not categorically mm. say Nigeria, I'm not going to react to this. Really. Well, so, I just hope um, she wasn't referring to Nigeria because um, as um, Nigerians, we need to be proud of where we are. Mm -hmm. And um, even our though, country in a good uh, yeah, life. and even though we are not where we really want to be, but we're not where we were yesterday. <laughs> we're <laughs> are you so, sure we're not where we were yesterday? Uh, well, at least there's there's a, there's a level of improvement. Mm. Only we want to deny the fact in terms of um, infrastructure, in terms of technology, in terms of um, certain things. We're definitely moving forward. We're mm. not where we were yesterday. The economy might be slow but it's a bit better mm -hmm. it's um yeah yeah in some aspects you know depending on the sector you want to look at it mm. from do you understand depending on the sector mm. be, you might say um the dollar is now but of course we, we definitely are yeah, not where so we were because exactly. i mean at least we left we're the, not yeah. we left the military this. regime <laughs> yeah. and we're trying civilization democracy and we have our, our challenges but we're going through it and yeah, we're, still we're going here, through so. it and then as yeah. nigerians i think um we have this thick skin we can always overcome anything which is why you will find a nigerian in, in, in every in every part of the world mm -hmm. so i feel like um we shouldn't talk down on our country. Like I've always said, Americans are the best marketers or brand 
ambassadors. Um, <laughs> isn't ambassador. <laughs> Brand managers because they make their country look like it's heaven on earth. And they're and like I ambassadors think... too. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the same um, attitude we should emulate in Nigeria because mm. if we keep talking down on our own country, then why won't a Donald Trump call us a SO country? Mm. I mean, if we keep talking down on our country, why would they not think that we don't have electricity or cell phones? Or why would, <laughs> or why would um, um, a tea time co anchor not say we're on National Geographic? <laughs> Okay, but um, I, I mean, I get where you're coming from because I I had this conversation with a friend, I think, mm. um, two days ago. I can't remember the story we were discussing, but it was something about um, uh, force and how they are portrayed and all that. Mm. And it felt like that portraying mm. is now just, is, not, is leaving the, it's not just about the Nigerian police force now. People are even taking it to the EFCC and to every mm. other angle and saying they don't know what they're doing or they mm. can't handle this mm. or they don't understand this technology. I said, if there's a difference in not being able to do your job and not being allowed to do your job. Mm. There are so many technologies that are in their possession and they can use it to do things you can't even imagine. Yeah. So I, I, I just was able to let her know that you need to start embracing your country. And it's as bad as even when there is something good about Nigeria, they, so they are not interested. It, yeah. mm. Even when they, like, like you said, they are not interested. But the ones that are interested in that conversation will look for every means to tell you mm. that this is not true. Mm. It's not possible. You know. So I think we should begin to see ourselves in a better light mm. and stop portraying portraying ourselves like the worst country on the universe. We don't have it worse. Yeah. I can categorically say that Nigerians don't have it worse. So I, I agree with you. We have a lot to get lot better of, at. African we do. Countries, yeah. We're not going to act like we don't know that. We have problems in some certain areas, but we are getting better day by day. And Definitely. with more positivities from everybody, I think we will and see. Then and I was going to, I want to say something. You know when Americans say, um, God bless America, maybe we are not going to say God bless America, but I think we should stop being negative about Nigeria because mm -hmm. they say, what you cost will not even bless you. Mm -hmm. So every single time mm -hmm. you just have something negative to say, why? I mean, this is where you live at the end of the day. It's mm -hmm. not like you live somewhere. You're living here, so you're surviving here. That means... It's not as bad as you're putting mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And I think the onus of um, is even more on those people with influence, someone like Rita Dominic. Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem with Nigeria, I think you're the best person to address it on your social media platform. Mm -hmm. Talk about, create movies around these problems. That's the mm -hmm. only way change would come. But if you keep talking down on the country and you're doing nothing, then, well... Well, like I said earlier on, she did not mention Nigeria. Well, we're mention just saying, country. we're just saying, so, it could be a house, right? Continue, no. um, continue assuming. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's just keep assuming. Mm -hmm. And maybe she'll come out to tell us um, where. That's it. Better. Trust me, she's not going to come out to say nothing. And that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can watch this episode all over again by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, you can watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co anchors Ewa Oluwa Ritu and Ife Oluwa Shunkaye and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Stay with us.